Zaria Jocelyn Burgess was born as an early Christmas gift to her mother, Akisha Pope, and her father, Joshua Lee Burgess, when she entered into the world on December 23rd, 2003. What was even more special was that her father's birthday was just two days later falling on Christmas Day. Keisha and Joshua were teenagers when they met at Weddington High School, with the teenage couple being just 15 and 16 years old when they had Zaria. Now, as most teenage couples do, Akisha and Joshua eventually broke up and Zaria primarily stayed with her mother, but her father was still very much present in her life. He kept her on his hip every single weekend when she would go to spend time with him. He would gush over his daughter on social media, calling her his mini-me, sharing loads of pictures with captions, stating how much he loved his daughter. He was present for her birthdays, movie dates, consistent weekend visits, and more. And most people viewed Zarya as a lucky girl to still have him present in her life. Fast forward to the late 2010s, Zarya is now a teenager and she's a rising star in her high school as she's about to enter her sophomore year. She was part of both the dance team and the marching band of her school. Her band director, Alan Sturdivant, said she was full of energy and was an ideal member of the student organizations. And by all accounts, she was just a super happy, seemingly normal teenage girl who loved to laugh, spend time with her friends, go to the movies, and anything else you can think of a teen growing up on pace loves to do. However, everything wasn't what it all seemed to be on the surface. You see, it's alleged that one of Zaria's closest friends told her mother that Zaria had confided to her how much she actually disliked going to spend time at her father's house. Apparently, she expressed that her father had some serious anger issues and at times he would lash out at her for no reason at all. She also claimed that Zaria said she didn't feel accepted by her father's side of the family with him being white and her mother being black, obviously making her biracial. Allegedly, Zaria was asked by her friend and her friend's mom if she knew whether or not her father was on drugs, but she never confirmed if he was or if he wasn't to her knowledge. Now, you hear me saying allegedly because obviously this is hearsay and it couldn't be confirmed, but that's what's been reported. As far as Zaria's mom, Akisha, and how she felt about her daughter's apprehension towards her father, well, it was never made clear whether or not Akisha knew how her daughter felt about her father over the course of time. You see, Akisha was so accustomed to being child-free on the weekends, she used that time to be part of a dance group that she attended with her church, and the only way she could go is by sending Zaria to be with her father. But on one specific weekend, the weekend of August 17th, 2019, Zaria begged and pleaded with her mother not to let her go to her father's house. In fact, she was so adamant about not going that she sent a text to one of her friends asking if she could spend the night with her and her family. But the friend told her she couldn't because her family had their own engagements for the weekend and they needed to be somewhere else doing their own thing. So... Unfortunately, Zarya had no other choice but to go to her father's house. And to this day, that said friend says they regret not allowing Zarya to come over and be with her and her family. Akisha didn't see her daughter's hesitant behavior as a red flag, but instead just chalked it up to a teenager being a teenager, wanting to do what they want to do and being defiant. So she shipped her daughter off anyway so she can continue on being part of this weekend dance group with her church. But what Akisha didn't know and probably wouldn't have ever imagined happening in her worst dreams was that it would be the last time she'd ever see her daughter again. It was Sunday morning, August 18th, 2019 at approximately 9.24 a.m. when 32-year-old Joshua Burgess walked into a police station and told the first officer he sees that he was turning himself in for a crime he committed. The officer says, okay, well, let me get your name and I'll look you up in the system for any outstanding warrants. And Joshua stops the officer and says, no, you don't need to do that. You won't find me in the system. He says, quote unquote, I just killed someone. So at this point, police are like, uh, okay, come over here into this interview room and tell us everything. So before any of this even hits the media, Joshua sat down and gave police a full confession about what he had just done. He gave police his daughter's full name and with zero emotion, as calm as ever, he tells them he had just took his daughter's life. And if they went back to his home right then and there, 
they be able to find her deceased body in his home in the 5100 block of Hampton Meadows Row in Union County, Monroe, North Carolina. Mind you, neighbors stated they didn't even know anybody was living in that home. They thought it was like abandoned or it was a crack house or something like that. But anyway, police took heed to what he told them and they headed out to his home. And sure enough, there is where they found a deceased 15-year-old Zaria Burgess. The scene that investigators walked into could be described as something straight out of a horror film. When they opened the door to Joshua's home, they entered his living room and there is where they found Zaria's body in full nudity with stab wounds all over her body, her neck slid open and her hands and feet bound with cuffs. Joshua has set Zaria's body up for display and to me it seemed as though he set it up as some sort of like like a like a trophy of some sort like a trophy for what he had done like he was so proud of what he did in this sick and twisted way especially after knowing what he allegedly told police during his confession which i'll get into in a bit now although zaria has stab wounds all over her body and autopsy revealed the cause of death was the slashing of her neck formally listed as sharp force injury to her neck here's the thing though that's not even where the mortifying details of what was done to her stops. Before mutilating Zaria's body, Joshua tortured his daughter for well over 24 hours. He forcefully entered his daughter's body without consent, if you know what I mean. He psychologically tortured her and he strangled her. Joshua was charged with one count of first degree homicide, statutory rape of a person 15 years or younger, three counts of first degree statutory sex offense, first degree kidnapping, and first degree sexual exploitation of a minor. Now fast forward to just a couple years ago on Friday, June 3rd, 2022, 35 year old Joshua Burgess was sentenced to death for the homicide of Zaria, plus 76 years for the slew of other charges he was found guilty of after a jury deliberated for three hours following a three week trial. The execution protocol is legal injection and in North Carolina, in order for the death penalty to be granted, a jury must unanimously vote in favor of the death penalty. Otherwise, the defendant will be sentenced to life in prison. So shout outs to the jury for all being on one accord with his punishment, because even though Joshua had confessed to his crime, a trial still needed to be held since the state was seeking the death penalty. And I think that justice for Zaria have been granted legally although you know nothing will ever feel good enough for this sick demon and what he's done now you're listening to all this and you probably at this point wondering okay what happened and what was this all even for well according to the ucso detectives joshua provided several motives for what he'd done during his confession but the two main themes throughout what he said were control and lust but it goes deep, and this is where we get further into the whys. You see, according to Annie Elise Ten to Life on YouTube, who also covered this story, so shout outs to her, she said she spoke to someone directly who was very close to Zarvia and her family. And for the sake of conversation, we'll call this person A. A was allegedly present in the courtroom for when evidence was shown and to hear the recording of Joshua's confession that was played for the jury. So first and foremost, A says she actually saw Joshua days before Zaria's homicide and I'm calling A or she because that's the pronoun that Annie Elise used to describe this person. But anyway, she said when she saw Joshua, he didn't look like his usual cleaned up self. She said he looked unkept as if he was on drugs. Now, quick side note, it was said that Joshua had been using drugs off and on throughout his life, and apparently in the neighborhood he lived in, Christy Math was the drug of choice for the addicts. And yes, I gave it a nickname. This is YouTube, so don't start crying in my comments asking, what's Christy Math? Use context clues, please. Anyway, seeing him like that spoke to what may have been his state of mind at the time of the crime. Like, you know, maybe he was under the influence or something like that. And we all know that that's not nearly an excuse for such atrocity. But moving along, the girl A alleged that in his recorded confession, 
Joshua spoke without an ounce of remorse and said that he actually planned his entire evil weekend with Zarya. Everything from taking her out to breakfast to the atrocious acts that he pictured himself committing and fantasized about doing that whole day to turning himself into the police. He allegedly stated that he was in love and in lust with Zarya. And as she got older, he didn't want anyone else to have her. He wanted her all to himself in the most sick, sadistic way. It's also alleged that he said he initially planned on making a scene at the police station when he went to give his confession so that they can shoot him down. You know, basically a suicide by cop. However, he ended up bitching up because he was afraid to die. So he ditched that plan. It's alleged that Josh stated he loved every single moment of what he did to Zaria and that it was the best weekend he's ever had in his entire life. He allegedly stated that after he stabbed Zaria and strangled her, he thought she was already dead, but baby girl was able to muster up the last bit of resilience that she had and she regained consciousness. She had enough strength to get up and tried to make an escape when she bolted towards the door, but Joshua ended up catching her and that's when he snatched her up and slit her throat from behind and placed her then on the living room floor. Again, you hear me saying allegedly a lot because there hasn't been any confirmed documentation that gives these details, but I included it anyway so you can gauge for yourself if you believe the claims to be true or not, although I see no reason for this person to be lying. And look at how God work, right? We all gotta leave this earth one day anyway, but this man tried to plan his own death only to try and avoid the plan altogether because his scary ass chicken out only to end up being forced to die by the law anyway because he got the death penalty. And although Joshua confessed to his crime, he actually pleaded not guilty. And his attorney asked that his take confession would not be played for the jury, but obviously that request was denied. The jury got to hear his entire detailed confession, which helped them in making their decision in granting the death penalty. Union County Sheriff Eddie Cathy said, quote, the details of this murder are indescribable. Every officer and detective involved in this case is feeling the effects of what happened to this child. There's no logical answer to explain why this man did what he's accused of doing. Our hearts and prayers are with Zarvia's mom and her family, end quote. The Union County Sheriff's Office made a statement saying, quote, This was truly an especially heinous, atrocious, and cruel killing of an innocent child. This case was emotionally taxing for everyone involved. We continue to grieve with and pray for Zaria's mother, end quote. You know, I can't even imagine how heartbroken that Zaria was during that entire ordeal. She knew in her gut that something was going to happen to her that day, hence her begging her mother not to go to that man's house. I can't even imagine all the thoughts that were running through her head as she endured all that pain from her very own father, who literally has the exact same face as her. And and I pray that he too has those same rush of thoughts and horror the day that they inject that man. As a daddy's girl myself, I could never see my father bringing me any harm of any sort. And then on top of that, she was named after this weirdo. Her middle name is Jocelyn, an ode to her father. So how? You know, how could you ever look in her face, see your twin, and do the heinous acts that you committed? I'm glad that he got the sentence that he deserved. And I believe anyone who can hurt an innocent child, whether they're related or not, should face extremely harsh sentences just like this. Now, out of all the articles I read, news clips I watched, I never once read or heard a single detail about any known prior abuse between Josh and Zaria. You know, like outside of saying like, you know, he's mean or she didn't want to be around him, but never any mentions of him physically harming her or even between him and her mother, Akisha. There's no reports of any of that during their familial history. So like I said earlier, yeah, there was some mention of drug addictions, but it's still mind boggling because like, were you a weirdo all of these years and you just hit it well? 
was there abuse and it was just never documented? How do you wake up one day and just say, you know what? This is the day that I'm going to allow the devil to take over my flesh and commit this heinous act on my own child and even plan it out. Even family members are confused as to why this happened. They don't know what led him to do what he did. You got people on Akeisha's side of the family who doted over how good of a father Joshua was to Zarvia on social media before all this even happened as well. So, you know, it's just really a mind fuck because what the fuck, you know? I did see someone who said she was one of Zarvia's friends in the comments of Annie Elise's video. And she said that she'd been around Zarvia and her dad before and nothing ever seemed off-putting about them. She said there was one weird moment where Joshua had picked Zarvia and her friends up from the movies and he asked the kids if they wanted to smoke with him. I don't know if it was cigarettes, weed or whatever, but she said they all declined and he just looked at them and laughed and dropped everybody off. But other than that, nothing else. She says Zavia never told her or any of her friends that anything was ever wrong or weird about her father. However, obviously some reports say that Zavia did confide in her friends about how she felt towards her father. So she probably opened up to some people while maintaining a certain image for others. I was on Facebook trying to see what other information I could try and gather about Joshua. And I came across a post of him in the truck traveling through different states and he had Zaria with him because apparently that was his job as a truck driver which he was blessed to have because he had a hard time finding work for a long time due to his two past felonies and Josh would take Zaria with him on some of his work road trips and while looking at the photos all I could think is damn you know he was probably trying to groom her during this time. One of her friends said that Zarvia allegedly told her how sometimes when Josh would get mad at her during these trips, he would allegedly tell her, quote, I should drop you off on the side of this road and leave you. Is that what you want? End quote. So it was real weird seeing those photos seemingly all gleeful, only to know he would threaten to abandon her whenever he got mad at her. And then he got these posts up about like standing up for humanity and these posts of Zarvia eating funnel cake with the caption, I love this little angel more than anything. Nothing beats quality time with my daughter. And it's just like, wow, you know, so much for standing up for humanity, posting children in the countries of Africa as if you feel so bad for them. So much for loving Zarvia, who is a literal angel now because of you only to turn around, torture her, misuse her trust, violate her, bring her harm, and ultimately take her life in the worst way possible. He also had this peculiar post from 2016 that's still up on his page, and it's a photo showing his hand holding a very sharp knife with other knives in the background, and his caption says, I like cutting people. I meant things. I like cutting things with a winky emoji. I found that post to be so eerie, knowing how he slit Zarvia's throat and stabbed her up the way that he did. Some people seem to believe that Josh was a white supremacist because he was following these weird cult pages on Facebook and he would write posts supporting Trump, bashing Barack and Michelle. They believe that he sacrificed his daughter to be a part of these cults. But I didn't want to emphasize that theory too much over what we know the facts to be. However, still a theory nonetheless. And of course, you can sound off in the comments with your thoughts on that. Akeisha has also caught a lot of flack on social media as people felt like it was her own fault while Zaria met her fate. In comments online, under news reports and in blogs and on social media, you could see people saying things like, Akeisha was selfish, she could have said to hell with that dance group to keep her daughter home, she should have paid attention to how her daughter felt about going with her father. She should have listened to her daughter when she said she didn't want to go with him instead of brushing her off. And I'll ask you to leave your thoughts on that in the comments. Personally, I don't know all of what Akeisha was privy to. I don't know if Zarvia ever expressed to her mother all the ways that her father made her uncomfortable. I don't know what Akeisha knew. So I personally don't want to speak to anything concerning her other than i know she's grieving she'll never get over the death of her daughter or how it happened she probably lives with her own guilt day in and day out she probably wishes every single day that she never allowed her daughter to go over there she probably wonders what her daughter's last moments were 
when she closes her eyes at night. She probably has so many questions in her mind that'll never get answered. She probably has to find ways to not live in a mental hell every single day. And some days, she might even succumb to those feelings. And all of this while still having to raise her son, because she also has a son by someone else outside of Joshua. So with very little knowledge as to what Akisha was privy to, I won't speak on her with a tone of chastise, judgment, or scrutiny. I'm going to leave this story off by saying this. As an adult, please, please, please pay attention to your child or children when they are displaying signs of defiance, when it comes to visiting other people or when other people have to come visit, whether that's adults or even other children, because sometimes other children are corrupt and they will corrupt your kids. They may not outright say what's going on, but if you see that their behavior seems rash, apprehensive, uncomfortable, anxious at the thought or mention of them being around a certain person or people, even if you don't know all that's going on with them just yet, take that as a sign that your child or children don't need to be around that person or people. You can find the details out later. Just please pay attention to your child's pleading and begging if if that's a thing. And as for children, please let let listen, let these kids hear what I'm about to say or at least repeat it to them, all right? Never be afraid to speak up if you're going through anything that's uncomfortable, even if the person isn't necessarily touching you, even if the person is another child like you, even if they're a little younger than you. They could be saying something that makes you feel icky or even a certain look that makes you feel like, ew, why is this person staring at me with this weird look in their eyes? Trust your instincts, okay? If that's the case, trust your instincts because one thing we know for sure is that you children and little babies and animals pick up on spirits faster than anybody else. So please, as a young person, never fear getting into any trouble for telling on someone who makes you feel uncomfortable or makes you feel like you're in danger. Never fear not being believed because if one person doesn't believe you, somebody else will. You have to be brave and you have to advocate for yourself, okay? If it's one thing that I'm so glad that my mother taught me was to never ever feel hesitant in coming to her if I ever felt uncomfortable about anything. And if I ever told her I didn't want to go somewhere, that was it. You know, I wasn't going. And the same for my dad. So shout out to them for, you know, giving me that safe space in that aspect. (sighs) Familia, this story was a very heavy one. If you stuck it out all the way into the end, I appreciate you so much. You already know, leave your comments on how the story made you feel. What are your opinions and thoughts? Have you ever been in a situation where you were made to feel uncomfortable and no one took you seriously? Do you know someone who was in that situation? How did things turn out? Sound off below. Let me know. I want to send my deepest condolences to Zaria's mother. My heart goes out to her family members and her friends. Of course, Zaria never deserved any of the pain she endured. And when I hear things like this, I can't even fathom why a human would have to leave the earth the way that they did, especially at such a young age like this. Although the way she left was disturbing, I pray that her spirit is able to live on with her loved ones in the best way forever. Rest in peace, Zaria. You'll never be forgotten.